Okay, we are now streaming on Facebook. So awesome. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to my second video, Lisa McKenna's Mortgages, Verico Paragon Mortgage, Inc. Uh, I'm pretty excited to be starting this new venture of doing these videos for you, trying to bring value to you. Um, if the dogs bark, I apologize. The first video they barked as soon as we went live. So, you know, there's always got to be a little something. I've got one on my lap right now, so hopefully she'll be good. Um, but I also want to introduce you to Edward Kim, and he is with Sajin. Is it Sajin Financial or just Sajin? What are we calling? Sajin. Sajin. Okay. perfect. Sajin is one of the three insurers in Canada, the default insurers. And uh, we are also going to be talking about an equity buyout today after a matrimonial split or if there's a divorce or other options as well. So I'm going to let Edward do some talking, explain who he is, and then we will get going. I'm going to try. I'm Again, guys, I, I got to apologize because I'm new to... Uh, doing these lives on Zoom. So if there's any questions, ask away. And if I'm not answering them while we're live, I will answer them afterwards. So I apologize for my lack of knowledge there. Work with me though. We're, I think we'll get it going. So Edward, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. So explain, who is Sajin? Lisa, thank you very much for having me. It's an honor and everybody who's there on Facebook Live. Um, but yes, my name is uh, Edward Kim, just an account manager for Sajin here in the Edmonton area. And if you're not familiar with Sajin, we were previously known as Genworth Canada uh, just last month as well. And if you're not familiar with, you know, Sajin or Genworth and, and you were mentioning, you know, mortgage insurance, uh, Sajin, we're just one of Canada's leading mortgage default insurers for just over the last 25 years. And we're proud to just be helping millions of Canadians realize their home uh, ownership dreams as well. So that's what kind of what we do in the mortgage space uh, for uh, the people here in Canada. Now, you did mention before kind of change. So I thought I would kind of give you an idea you know, kind of what happened. It was a great uh, branding opportunity to kind of uh, change, um, you know, our name. However, when it comes to our business, from what we did before, you know, nothing has changed. And we continue to provide the same promise that we've always done and still have uh, provided the true values to provide our ex ex um, outstanding service to folks like you and lenders out there and first time home buyers as well. And what does it mean for our business if it changes anything? It actually doesn't. Um, although our name has changed, our business actually has remained the same and continue will, and will continue to remain the same. So nothing has changed in that area. But everyone kind of asks me, you know, Sajin, not Sagan, but Sajin, you know, how did we decide to come on that name? Well, it comes from two different parts. Sajin represents wisdom and intelligence, while Jen, uh, uh, comes from the Latin word rebirth, which also comes from, you know, our original, our, our name previously as well. And we want to capture that in our brand values and our leadership thought they would position it together as Sajin uh, for everybody as well, for those two areas. Um, I hope that I can bring wisdom and intelligent to, intelligence to you, but that's kind of where that name came from as well. That's really cool. I like that. Perfect. So Briefly, Anna, and this may end up not being briefly, but can you explain why we need default insurance? Like what, what is your primary um, job in the market? Just if that's a brief conversation, I know we can like get into huge, but just so people can understand when we say default insurance, what that means. You know, very good question you know, why is default mortgage insurance provided or needed? Um, you know, very simplistically, you know, if you go to, you know, lenders or people who provide mortgages, generally that you require a minimum of 20% down, especially if it's your primary residence. 
But what default mortgage insurance allows is to have those lenders to be able to lend to people with less than 20% down by actually purchasing this insurance, which is mandatory as well. So that's where default mortgage insurance is very important in the space. Um, a lot of people believe it's for the first time home buyer and generally it is for those who just wanna get into the marketplace, maybe not rent anymore, build their own equity uh, because it's very, very difficult to even have a 20% down saved up. And you can just imagine, you know, the equity savings and, and the potential, um, you know, for that person as well. But we're also finding it's not just for the first time home buyer, that sometimes that second purchase needs uh, default mortgage insurance. So it's just a great option for people to get into the home buying um, experience and lifestyle earlier than having to save up that kind of money. Perfect. That's awesome. That's a great way to explain it. Thank you. Um, so I think we'll we'll get to the meat and potatoes of what I wanted to discuss today. Um, you know, we we see it in in the news more often about divorce rates, and and you know you you just hear it frequently. And I've run into it a few times in my career where people didn't know that they have options when there's a divorce or um, just a matrimonial split. So the product that we frequently use was formerly called a spousal buyout, but um, you've, you've, you educated me today that it's now, we're now referring to it as equity buyout. You know, what's our industry if it isn't changing? So, <laughs> um, so if I'd love it if you could maybe just explain a little bit about the equity buyout and what type of clients really benefit from it and if there's any guidelines to follow really good point uh lisa and uh, i'm really happy that we're able to talk about this you know some people believe it's like a program or a product i really find it, it is actually just a solution for people in an unfortunate situation that's you know really what i find as well and we've been seeing a lot more activity i would say personally where i've been talking to a lot of people about this and uh, at the very least providing that option you know it used to be called spousal bio kind of in our world uh, about november of last year um, and what that generally was where if you had some someone in a certain situation so if you had someone who was married same-sex marriage or even in common law where two people were uh, owned a house together and both were on the mortgage. But unfortunately, uh, they were looking at splitting um, and either a divorce or just a, a split in common law. However, the equity in the house that both people put in, maybe because the marketplace, the way it was, or there wasn't enough in the equity to go to, let's say 80%, that would be a conventional way of kind of refinancing the equity wasn't available, it'd be very difficult for two people to kind of split uh, amicably and be able to pay out that other person that they're owed. So they're re really in a really tough spot. But what this uh, product actually offers is where if they are splitting, we will actually allow in this instance for them to quote unquote technically, uh, but it's not, that's not the technical term, but technically they could actually refinance that property that they they currently own together up to potentially 95% of current market value and then use that equity to um, give a lump sum payment to the person who is leaving the property. But because of someone who is splitting, we'd also allow them to pay out joint debt as well if it is in the separation agreement. I'm not gonna go into the exact details. That's something that a broker or mortgage specialist or lender would help you guide you through. But those are some great options for someone in a very tough spot. And you can imagine, you know, 80% equity to 95%, that extra 15% equity definitely could make the, make the difference between uh, two people being able to amicably leave each other uh, a lot cleaner than, than they would normally. That, yeah, that's exactly it. And the reason why I wanted to, to kind of discuss this today, and I, I really felt that it was 
one that we needed to that I needed to bring to the forefront sooner is because there's even a lot of lawyers don't know about this program. A lot of clients don't know about the options. So the more that we can really bring it to the forefront and let people know that this option is there, I think we can save a lot of heartache and a lot of stress for people. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And, you know, a lot of times people are just trying to find a, a really quick, easy, or painless solution in, in this type of circumstance. And um, a lot of times, the whole is the largest asset that needs to be divvied up. Yeah. And, and what, I, what I feel that is very um, great about this program is, uh, especially if children are involved, at least one person gets to keep that home, that house that they've been living in. They don't need to sell it and then get the equity out which I think is a, is a huge benefit, but I mean, such a great, a better experience for that family of whoever is going to keep that home and, and the children that you know, are there and the school that they live in and, and not having to break it up and sell it and then divvy it up that way. Uh, that's what I find is, is such a great aspect of this program. Yeah, I, I really, really like that too. You know, having children myself, and seeing a few of my friends go through it, it, it you want to keep try and keep as much consistency and stability for the children and and sometimes it's that home right so it's it's a it's a wonderful option and of course you still the person staying still has to meet all the qualification guidelines and still has to meet all the lenders tick boxes right for requirements but that's that's where I come into play and I can make sure that the lender, you, you meet all the lender's guidelines. So, uh, because there's your guidelines, like Sajin's guidelines, but then there's also the lender's guidelines as well. And finding that home can sometimes, home, your financing home can, can sometimes be a little tricky sometimes, right? That's why you need to come to an expert to help you with that. So yeah, I don't, I think- I think that's such an important part. Yeah, it, it really is. And I, I think we've touched on a lot of the important parts to it. Now, with, the, um, with, the, with this product, uh, an appraisal will be required, correct? To confirm the equity uh, in the property. Yeah. Yeah. So are there any other guidelines, base guidelines that are generic across the board, uh, like an appraisal that that would be good for people to know off the bat? Or is that just that the major one that you would say? No, very good point. If uh, two people who were thinking about entertaining this product beforehand, um, yes, they should expect an appraisal. However, if they're looking at paying out, let's say, joint debt um, uh, as well, then they should definitely look into uh, needing a separation agreement and having at least an idea in place uh, because that will also be needed beforehand. Um, and any information, well, and also, you know, really talking about um, or at least discussing um, how much the, the house will be kind of valued at, purchased at, and, and how much equity will be needed and, and how much one person is going to take is always important because that will be needed on the on, on information that way. Everything else kind of falls into place. So you're really at documents like a sales agreement, uh, which will be needed. Now, realtors are, are not involved in this. Uh, they can just create it themselves, but a purchase sales agreement uh, is also something they just have to keep in mind. Uh, and lawyers will be needed to be involved. So this is something that just like a purchase, they, they'll need lawyers uh, to assist. So traditionally, in my experience, we've just had the lawyers do up the offer to purchase as well to try and make things as simple as possible because they're already talking to each party. So um, that's where I try to help out as much as possible and communicate with the lawyers and say, this is what we need. I try to take things off the clients as much as possible just because I know it's a stressful time. So I want to make this as, as, as 
easy transaction for you as possible. Um, and I think when you're working with a broker, that's something that you want to look at is, are they, are they going to help you out, not just with the financing, but are they going to help make it as stress free as possible? Because it can be that way on the financing end. So um, to just try and take some of that, that stress away that you're not going to be able to avoid in other areas. I, I agree. And I think a couple of things about this program that people should be aware of, um, you definitely want someone on the lending side, like a broker who is well experienced um, and can provide you a lot of options. Um, you actually don't have to stay with the same lender that you have your mortgage originally with. Um, if you if that person and generally this happens a lot where maybe if people are splitting, they don't actually want to have their banking at the same bank. So they may want to, you know, have their lending uh, mortgage at a different institution, which this pro this program will allow you to do, uh, actually. So you don't have to have the same, same bank. It can be at a different, you know, lender. It could be, you know, with a different institution, uh, which is a great option. So you really want to make sure that you've got that expertise, but also you do have a lot of options at your fingertips on what is best for you, uh, you know, the consumer in that situation. Yeah, that's exactly it. I think we've covered a lot of ground already. I'm I'm very thankful that uh, that you were able to to help me out with this. Is there any other thing that you want to add, or or do you think we've covered it? The only final thing that I wanted to talk about when it came to the equity buyout was I did mention a little bit that in November we changed the name from spousal to equity buyout. And the main reason why is not because we like changing names, obviously, to from Jenna with the Sajin. Uh, there's, a, there's purpose. Um, so we were able to expand this option uh, from, you know, people who were in a marriage or same sex marriage or um, a common law situation to where if you had um, a situation where you had siblings or parent and child bought a house together and then they wanted to spit, split because, hey, maybe one of the siblings wanted to buy their own house now, uh, but they put money and equity into it. Now we'll allow you to have that type of situation and actually provide equity to the person leaving the property. And all you would need is actually a sales agreement drawn up by the lawyer, just like you were mentioning before, a very clean, clean transaction as well, where we'll allow you to use this program for that type of situation. And again, potentially bring it back up to 95% of current market value. And then, you know, the child or one of the, the brother or the sister can keep that current one and um, a great option for people as well. Oh, that's, thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, does now, does that, does that program then work for people who are not related or is it strictly only for family members? So like say, say a friend, they wanted to move in together just because they want instead of paying somebody else rent, they wanted to put it towards their own property, but there's no relationship outside of friendship. Is, is that a type of relationship that could be assisted as well? There, there's potential in there. The biggest thing that they're looking for is, is the person keeping the property, is that their primary residence um, and they're living in it? So none, uh, nothing like a, a rental pool or rental kind of area, but really for that person keeping it is their primary, is that option. And there's a lot of gray area that some people may uh, look at trying to do, but the, the main reason is, it, we're just making it, we're making sure that it doesn't look like or it is a refinance of any type. So as long as that split is uh, an actual split, um, that's what they're really for. And that person's actually keeping the property. Perfect. Okay. So like, and this is actually an example I've had where two friends purchased together and the one met his future wife. And so they, they wanted to move into their own place. So and the other person wanted to keep the home. So that type of a scenario, it could work for, correct? Seems like, yeah, we'd entertain that for sure. Wonderful, perfect. 
Excellent. So is there, have we forgotten anything? I don't think we have. Not with this program, no. That's awesome. Perfect. Well, I am going to stop the, the live on Facebook here right away, which is good timing because I have a little woof from the side here who's looking out the window seeing people walk by. So to everybody on Facebook, if I didn't get to your questions or messages, like I said, I will follow up with um, a reply right away. And I want to thank Edward Kim with Sagent again for coming on on his very busy day. I know you're a busy guy, so I really appreciate it. And um, I will see everybody soon.